to a new episode of Paul Bark Heartbeats Podcast. I'm your host, Camille. And this week, I'm joined by my good friend, as well as my other co-host for my other podcast, Kayla. Um, we talk about the resident a lot on that podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm here for a very special reason. There's a connection to, this, to the resident. There's a reason well, I'm here. Kayla, you want to at least introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, I'm Kayla. I I live in South Carolina. So obviously you probably connected that to the accent. Um, I currently am uh, working full-time in PR. Uh, so if you've seen a lot of the graphics and stuff, that's all me for the resident rule breakers. Yeah, <laughs> she does all the graphics for that, for resident rule breakers. Me, I just do plain stuff. <laughs> I don't know how to do the stuff she does. So anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, we've been friends for like two years kind of thing. We've kind of been co-hosting the Resident Rule Breakers podcast together yep. for the past two years. And we've interviewed some of the big names. So I wish that we had, were able to interview. Yeah, we for the resident, and if these are names you probably recognize, um, Malcolm DeMar Warner, uh, Malcolm Bruce, Greenwood. Warner Bruce Greenwood, um, also the creator of the show, Amy Holden Jones, like several people who are connected. Yeah, to several recurring actors that are on that show as well. Mm-hmm. So check it out at Resident Podcast on Instagram. Or the Resident Room Breakers on all the platforms so you can find podcast. Uh, anyway. But yeah, um, so this week we are talking about Taking the Reins, which is a second movie for Hallmark Channel, um, Fall Harvest. It is also the second movie in Hallmark where the main couple was divorced couples and was a divorced couple and they're like finding love again. Um, This movie starred Nikki Deloach, who is also the executive producer, Scott and Scott Porter. Um, you might know him from Friday Night Lights. So Nikki Deloach is a Hallmark darling. She's been in several movies. Um, she plays Samantha and Scott plays Luke. So the official synopsis of the movie is a writer returns to her family ranch where she discovers what ended her marriage and why she stopped riding horses. So, anyway, what are your thoughts on this movie first? Uh, my first thought um, was that it started really slowly. Uh, I just, I was like, it's, this is moving really slow. Like, I've, I watch a lot of movies. Uh, I, during the Christmas season, I watch a lot of more Christmas related movies from Hallmark. So I, I am used to the Hallmark stuff. Um, but I watch a lot of movies, okay? So when I say, it start, for me, it started slowly. It's just an opinion from what I, all the movies I've seen. I had, it did start slow. It kind of, I think it needed to um, have the, establish the base of it, which the, mo- which the beginning of the movie did. It was hilarious though, because a lot of the comedic moments, for the movie to me was in the beginning <laughs> um one of my favorite ones was when corbin bernson who played um sam's dad yeah uh he when he was trying to sneak out from behind this yeah was, she was like she she just found out that her ex-husband was gonna, was hired as a tr- horse trainer for him and you know she wanted to talk to her mom about it and Corbin was like her dad was like trying to run and hide and she was like ah you come here now <laughs> you you <laughs> That was too funny. But the other, my favorite part, my favorite like comedic scene was definitely the family dinner. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, since when do you eat yams or something like that? <laughs> oh my god, the whole cup. It was about like the whole, the whole, uh, the like the her sister, her mother's 
face as they had the whole, that whole conversation. It was so funny. The, the sister was like gosling down why he did everything. It was just watching them like they had. So, um, like it was a tennis match. And I was sitting there going, it's drama, 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 drama. I mean, but here's the thing, that's to be, they, they must have expected that because like they hid it. They hid the fact that he, they hired her ex from him, from her the whole time. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That is, but it was hilarious watching that scene. I, 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 they were talking about the emotional conversation with horses or whatever, so I guess. Luke it was more like you need to connect with your horse so you can actually be better. And Nick, um, Sam was more of a um, practice makes perfect, just you know, whatever, it's just keep doing it over and over again. And um, yeah, <laughs> how that, how that, how no time we were yelling at each other, I was thinking to myself, like, this isn't about horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a there's an underlying meaning to this entire conversation. Because <laughs> it started going from like, yeah, you need an emotional connection with a horse too. How do you have an emotional connection with a horse if the per- horse keeps running away? And all these other things, I'm sitting there going, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but that was hilarious. Um, so some of the supporting actors in this movie is Eliza Hayes Mayer, who plays Alex. I will actually be talking to her. And Megan McNulty, who is um, the executive producing partner with uh, Nikki, Nikki Deloach. Um, she also played Amanda, Sam's boss. Corbin Burson played Sam's dad. Um, Janine Turner is the actress who plays Bonnie, Sam, Samantha's mom. But yeah, all right, so let's start from the very beginning. Sam is a writer for Lifestyle Magazine, um, but her editor, like, she's been writing like some weird stuff, personalized dinnerware. As someone who, because I have a media degree, as someone who has partially been trained in journalism, these are like the most obscure topics of journalism you can probably write. Yeah, who reads or writes stuff about personalized dinnerware? Do people actually sketch their initials on their forks or something? <laughs> it, it, no, I, I, I mean, yeah, it makes no sense to me. Unless you're like a wedding uh, coordinator or something like that's not going to be something that a normal person is going to be reading. Yeah. So anyway, um, the boss, her editor is like, you know, I guess Sam wants a um, cover story, but her editor is like, your stories are not really connecting with readers. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, who's really reading about personalized sports? But anyway. <laughs> It's, so, the most, yeah. it's the most crazy out there storyline they could probably give this character, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, so Sam, so she challenges Sam to like find a story that has her in it or whatever. And so um, she, Sam finds out that her family is hosting the Northeastern Championships. Oh, and um, they, when she finds that out, she says that she's gonna write about the championship. So she goes to her family's farm. And that's when we meet Luke, her ex-husband. Here's the thing, how would you feel? Would you, I feel like her reaction to finding out Luke was, you know, working for her family was 100% reasonable. Yes. yes. Yes, she didn't go home expecting to see him at all. So part of the hosting duties for the championships is the the farm has to have a rider in the championships. And 
since um, Sam hasn't written in a while, um, her dad, played by Corbin, is the one who's going to be going into the championships and he will be riding the horse rascal. That is one really, really pretty horse. Oh my god, that horse is so pretty. <laughs> but um, the horse is and the trainer is Luke, who is Sam's ex-husband because he is the best trainer in the state. And so that's pretty much the basics of the movie. Mm -hmm. And Sam and him, you can tell Sam and him have feelings from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, it's a, the whole dinner conversation, you don't, you don't get angry like that with your ex kind of thing, unless like you still have feelings. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? And so, There's definitely a lot of unresolved issues um, yeah. left. Yeah, when he found out, when she found out that he um that he lived on the property or whatever, it's you know there there was parks there when like he um when he invited her to move uh, for a drink and like they sat down and had a talk. And they named the couch Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Your furniture, okay. That was the number one thought that came across my mind when I was like, "Why?" Like, the first time they brought it up, I was like, "I don't have names for my furniture." I can promise you. I was actually having dread, dreaded thoughts in my brain, like that this was a fur rug that she was like, you know, like petting, and it was a fur rug of like a dead animal or something, and maybe that's who Winston was. But I'm looking at like there's no fur rug, so she's talking about the couch. <laughs> like you know i was thinking it was like the blanket or the hood or you know whatever so some kind of commemorative thing but yeah was, the couch is named winston but okay so let i want to mention this because i did mention it on twitter i was like the jewelry that that nick had on with the, the necklaces and the earrings i'm like girl is rocking the joy and she looked good in that red dress yeah you can kind of tell that um luke and sam definitely had feelings for each other and i was cheering them on they were cute they were cute the moment that like they had the the, they, the moment that she saw him in the bar i was like "Ooh, i like this <laughs> so what sam is like yeah, you know, Luke is training her dad or whatever to do the jumps. And I have to say that, like, stuck people who... did When I was watching it and I was like, that's filmed really well uh, because you couldn't tell it wasn't Corbin. <laughs> I could tell. I could like, tell. for me, like, they did, they purposely shot it in a certain way yeah. where you couldn't see the stuck person. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first I could tell when you know the um, when Sam and Luke went out riding and they had the back shot of like Sam riding. I was like, yeah, that's not Nikki. It's like the, the hair color and everything was totally different. Like from the back, it looked like she had gray hair. <laughs> like that. Wait, there's a reason off. why a lot of these um, stunt actors or, or something had dye their hair. It's because they're trying to look as much like they're the person they're Actors. portraying as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, um, so say so the dad is, you know is making the jumps and he's like, you know, I think he so fast forward a little bit more to um the dad like getting hurt or whatever, so and him being stubborn try to get back on the horse and you know not follow the doctor's orders so whatever so, so Sam was like I'll take your place and this is like the first time really that she has been on a horse in three years 
or whatever. And Sam was like the best writer in the state, in the region, really, you know, when she was in her prime. And the reason why she quit, I want to point out that the reason why she quit was because she said that um, her mind wasn't in the game. If she, if this is like around the time where it, the divorce was happening. Her dad was like a hard ass, pretty much, you know. And um, she quit and she um, had a journalism degree. So she started using that instead. Oh, can we talk about kiss number one? <laughs> that was a baby. Okay, so you guys, there were three kisses in this movie. Four. But yeah, there were three. There were three kisses in this movie. And it was so cute. It wasn't like out of place or anything. It was like, you know, sometimes they're forced, especially um, in, in certain types of movies, they're forced for the plot line. And yeah. this just felt like it was supposed to be there. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to point out that you know, they they said in this Mickey said in several interviews that this movie was about second chances, you know, second chances in love, second chances in you know whatever you, you want in life or whatever. And I love to add that another recurring theme in this movie, I feel, is how do I say it? Like the words I'm proud of. Because it seemed like he, Luke also, you know, in the, his conversation with Samantha, he was saying, you know, um, I felt intimidated because he, I was just a beginning trainer. I wasn't really good. And I'm married to this woman who, you know, uh, was part of this prestigious family or something. And, you know, I never felt like I was doing a good job. Like I, I felt like I was failing. And she said, I never told you that you'd fail. And she, he said, you never said I was doing a good job. You know what I mean? You never, mm -hmm. and yeah. You know, and it's like in this kind of conversation pops up again later with, um, you know, Sam's parents, Sam and her, her dad, everything. It's just like the lack of, well, I think a lot of people don't realize that, yeah, you may think that the person knows that you're proud of them, but sometimes it's just good to hear it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of, a lot of people have issues with a parent or parents okay. or a, a family member of some kind because they just don't get the recognition of what they've done and that's all they want. So yeah, um, it's, and, and in this case, uh, Sam wanted it from her dad. She wanted to hear, I'm proud of you. That's it. Luke, Luke wanted to hear it from her. Yeah. You know, Luke, and like all these people just, I mean, look at how many problems could have just been solved or whatever if they had just say i'm proud of you or you good job or yay you know that kind of thing yeah the scene that was most touching um for me was the scene with um corbin and nikki where he shows her that he kept all her articles <laughs> oh I'm, I'm not laughing because it's funny i'm laughing because i'm crying <laughs> it was like really touching and I'm a like I I you know I'm a trained writer I guess so I guess I can understand like if my dad were to take out a thing of all the articles I'd written you know and say yeah I'm I'm proud of you I keep up with your work even if it's like the most mundane topic ever I'm still keeping up with it and I'm still collecting it you know I would cry I'd be like that's really sweet you know. So yeah, I, I could react like that because I have a relationship like that's positive, very positive with my father. Yeah, it, it reminded me a lot of my own conversation with my parents, where uh, it get it gets to you, it gets to you when you 
but you're always dealt with negativity. Like my parents, my, my biggest complaint with my parents is always like, they always point out all the things I did wrong and never point out anything I did good. So one time I got tired. I got really tired of it. I was like, I was going to visit my parents and I hadn't even walked in the house yet. And my mom is listing like five things that I did wrong. Like your hair isn't brushed, why why your dress look a mess, etc. All these things. And I'm sitting there going, come here, welcome home. I haven't seen you in a week. How you doing? How was your day? I'm, how was your ride over? Was it safe? Was the handyman driver nice? And she was like, why are you talking like that? And I was like, because those are things I'd like to hear. Instead of all the things that I have done wrong before even walking into the house, just tell me something good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally say hi. You know, and yeah. it's like, it's, it's, um, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. But when you, when you deal with negativity all the time, or when you deal with like, uh, parents who just don't say things that you want, it is hard, but you crave it, but sometimes it, so when they actually say things like, I'm proud of you, or you good job, you're like, can you repeat that? <laughs> what did you just say? Or like- I, I guess I I can't relate for it from, from my dad because he was always there for me. Like, you know, because he watched me struggle. Uh, another side note, I do have a disability. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a neurological disorder called epilepsy. And it really held me back in school. So when my schoolwork was one of those things that my dad always was proud of because I had to fight through a, a, a medical condition to get there. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't necessarily hear that from, from my maternal grandparents and I wish I had. So I can relate to, because when I would go over there, it was always like, uh, why wasn't I wearing makeup or, you know, why is my hair in a ponytail or don't I like because it's comfortable <laughs> yeah so. just I just wish people would realize how important it is to hear good job or you know like stop saying negative things it affects people's mentality when all they hear is all the things that they've done wrong you know, sorry, I'm getting emotional just talking about it, but that, this whole, that part of the movie uh, touched me <laughs> the most. Yeah, it, it was touching, yeah. Because I can relate, and I think about, most of us can relate. A lot of people on Twitter would say things like, how do I, like, I wish my parents would say this. I wish someone would say this to me. I wish someone, you know, you know it was just like, yeah anyway so yes everybody please take the time to tell your loved ones i'm proud of you and that you love them yeah and that you love them don't don't wait till it's too late don't assume that they know don't be like well i do this for them so they should know that I no 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 the words are important we cannot people are not mind readers <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. The words are very much important. When dad hurt his wrist, um, Sam stepped up to take his place. And like I said, she hadn't been competing in a long time, in about three years. So she was rusty. And like, you know, she, Luke was telling her, hey, look, don't do the jumps or whatever. Just ride the horse or whatever. And she was like, I can't hear you. <laughs> totally ignoring it. So she tried to do a jump with Rascal, but she fell off the horse. And, you know, she's, she's like, so Luke was like, are you gonna, you know, so Sam was like, are you gonna trade me? And Luke says, that depends 
are you going to listen? So what I found out last night was that that was ad lib. That was not even on the script, but yet it actually fit the scene in their relationship because it's like, so I was surprised that was ad lib. That wasn't in written because I'm like, that actually worked with their, where they were at in their relationship or whatever. So, um, but yeah, anyway. They go, they train and they train to do the jumps and competition. And um, wait, what is it? Let's talk about there's kiss number two. <laughs> kiss number two was really sweet. I don't remember what she said to talk about it, but um He, they were asking you, oh yeah, she was like, are you still in love with me? He, yes, he, without hesitation, he goes, yes. And, and he was like, I know you're going to ask, I know what you're thinking already. You're probably going to, you're probably in your mind thinking about all the things that could go wrong and why we broke up in the first place and having all of the like, what ifs or whatever. And then but all I can think of is right now at this moment is how much I want to kiss you. And he goes and kisses her. And I'm like, oh my God, I love these two people. <laughs> I love them. Uh, I swear, this is like the great love story. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so then, they, so then she goes and competes. There's a competition. And that's a scene with Corbin, with her dad, and um, Sam. And I, that, I, that to me was the, love, the best scene in the movie. That to me was definitely the best scene in the movie. And I, I want to point out that um, Nick's dad was dying when this movie was being made. He actually passes away a couple weeks after this film was wrapped. He died of um, dementia and stuff and she um she wrote on her twitter that it was a hard scene for her to make that she was also like thinking about her own father and at last night watching it was also hard for her to watch as well because again this was around the time her father was dying so she had all of her articles in her secret it's cigar box. <laughs> so. I, I like the question before she opened. She's like, since when did you start smoking? <laughs> He's like, I'm not smoking. But yeah, I like I do like that he kept all those articles of hers. Like you said, it's from all the way from like school newspapers or whatever. Because uh-huh. you guys, her relationship with her father was all connected to riding horses. It seems right. So when she quit writing voices and started to go into journalism, she, you know, she she felt like he was angry at her or whatever, so disappointed and stuff. And she, he was, he was like, "No, I was never disappointed. I thought I disappointed you." And. You know, like I said, you guys, you guys have to open. This is one thing that I think this movie left, tells everyone. Just, just, tell, just say I love you. Say I'm proud of you. Don't just do, don't, don't, don't just do it with actions. Do it with words. Work yeah, I mean, a lot of times they'll say, like, actions speak a lot louder than words. In this case, not so much. A lot of times the words are necessary. I think both are necessary. Yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. I think both are necessary. People seem to seem, people seem to take the actions speak louder than words to mean that you don't have to say it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, no, no. It, it, means like it, it means like you have to say it and do it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, so she she wins the competition. She wins the ribbon, or whatever. Which, in my opinion, was 
predictable, but yeah. yeah like, <laughs> duh. Of course she's going to win. And um, he, they decided to keep the farm. Um, Alexandra, who is her younger sister, will become general manager. Um, Luke will come on as full-time trainer for the horses or whatever. And Nikki, Sam will go back to writing. She does get the cover story for her magazine. So mm-hmm. that's cool. And I just, uh, I love this movie. So and her and, and her and Luke tend to start patching things up. <laughs> yeah. I do have, I do want to point out though that I like the little side story with Alexandra and the um the other horse trainer, Matthew. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because she's like, why won't he ask me out? And you find out later he's he's gay. Yeah, he's like, he's like, this is my boyfriend. And she's like, oh, that's why. Because I'm sitting there going, because she, he, she was talking about this, you know, spot that, um, you know, hyping it up or whatever and the guy goes oh that sounds like a perfect date spot and she took it as does she does he like me does he not like me and I'm sitting there going girl no (laughs) read the room (laughs) but there are a lot of twitter people that would say that the guy is cute and they actually all thought that um he might be a good love interest for the sister. So like nobody guessed that he could have been gay. Yeah, so for some people, it was a plot twist. Um, You knew? You could No, I could could figure, I mean, you can read it. Yeah, I did like the plot twist of the the guy. And I can can only imagine all of the hallmarkies who are, you know, homophobic going, what? (laughs) <laughs> I like that they're um they're bringing about things that they haven't really brought about before like divorce and LGBT and all this stuff because it's definitely part of culture now and it needs to be shown yeah it definitely does and this movie is this movie how, how many if you could give this movie how many stars how would you give it I, I'd say about three and a half. Why? Um, the slow start. But what do you like about it? What did you like about it? I, I liked the slow start and, and unfortunately the predictable ending. Because uh, <laughs> it's Hallmark. Everybody does. Everybody yeah. gets the um, ending. But I, I liked the humor. I liked uh, certain. Part, the, certain parts of it just really fit together. Uh, just the acting was good. The hair and makeup was spot on. The jewelry was good. <laughs> the clothes and the jewelry were good. And of course, they had horses. So that's a lot. That's animal trainers. You know. Yeah. That's a lot of work just to have an animal on a set. Okay. Yeah. Much less an animal that's like five times your size. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just I like most of the movie. It's just when the plot starts really slow, I, I get I get bored. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, the I, the act the um animals the animal trainers are Christine Pitcairn and Ryan Peterson. They're um Connecticut based. Um, the their Instagram is ltd underscore animals underscore animal underscore actors. So like they train horses mainly from movies or whatever. Um, Rascal's real name is Patrick, and um, they actually posted some stuff, some behind the scenes stuff about their horses and how they built. The horses were worked with the different actors and stuff. So, um, yeah, and it seems like Scott Porter and Nick do have writing backgrounds. 
So this was really nice of them and stuff. But yeah, the horses were really beautiful. Uh, I, I want to go ride a horse. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yes, on my uncle's farm. Oh, I've never ridden one. I want to now. <laughs> But yeah, and then um, I would give this, I would probably crank it up a little bit more than you. I'd probably give this four stars. Because here's the thing, I do get what you're saying where the beginning was slow, but I feel like it was a to build a basis of the rest of the movie. And also like if it, the beginning was also had the comedic moment, you know, with her, with the family dinner was, definitely my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite scenes to laugh at and um you know also like the her conversation with her parents about her ex-husband um but I I think yeah the the message is very important in this movie the message of just like being honest be straight up tell your loved ones I love you you know, don't wait till it's too late. Or don't leave them hanging. Don't let them think that you don't. You know. And like I said, a lot of people seem to ha take the saying, actually speak louder than words, as you don't need the words. And I'm like, no, it means that they have to go together. You have to be, you have to say it and do it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, I was in tears for this movie. Corbin did a great job. All the actors did such a great job. Yeah, they did. Yeah, all of them did such a great job. And the horses were wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, anything else you want to add, Kayla? Um, the main reason why I agreed to talk this movie with Camille was the connection from this movie to The Resident. Yep. Corbin Burnson is the dad of Nick Nevin on The Resident, played by Emily Van Camp. Who is leaving? Who, who is leaving the show. So Corbin's presence on The Resident might be just We're disappearing. Um, he is going to be on The Resident. This He's going to be on The Resident in two weeks. Yeah two weeks so if you guys want to watch more of Corbin Burson he is going to be on the resident next Tuesday night right? not next month. yeah it's um it airs uh October 12th yeah October 12th so if you guys want to go watch that go watch more Corbin Burson go turn on to Fox medical drama of the resident. the resident um if you guys 8 p.m east coast time if you guys want to hear more about the resident come listen to me and kayla on the resident rule breakers podcast we talk a lot <laughs> yeah and in depth on the show that we've both followed since before it aired um so, I mean, we, we know this show front and back, inside and out. And uh, we, yeah. So the air show's been on the air since January 2018. We have been following it since before then. Since 2017. Yeah, since 2017. I think, I think my Facebook group for the resident started once they- Once I found out that up. Matt Zucri was going to be the lead in the resident. Yeah. That was all I needed to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, so the other things that I want to talk about is um, I did post on Instagram what ha what's going on with me. So I'm going to talk about this now. Um, I have a health scare going on. Um, would I call it health scare? Since it's not really a health scare because it's happening. Um, but uh, I have a tumor in the back of my throat right by my vocal cords. Um, it's 
the dimensions of it is like two centimeters by two centimeters. So it's pretty big, inch by inch kind of thing. Um, the dots, I got my CT scan on this past Thursday. The doctor needs to get an MRI because the CT scan wasn't clear enough to see how vascular the tumor is. So that MRI will happen on the 23rd of October. I would likely be taking a break from podcasting sometime in November or December, which really, really sucks because like that's the height of Hallmark Christmas movies. I mean, like and stuff. But yeah, there's um, so at least two weeks there will be no podcasting coming out in November or December. Um, also, but I will prob- I, ha- I do have a lot of interviews that I haven't released yet, so I might just release them during that time. Um, also, the other thing is that Hallmark has come out with 20 Hallmark movies um, on their list. Now, mind you, this isn't the full list of Hallmark Christmas movies. They it's predicted to be 40 in all, 41, if you include Crashing Through the Snow, which already aired back in July. But um, yeah, so there are movies starring Danica McKellar, um, Lacey Chabert, Candace Cameron Bure, the Nine Kittens of Christmas, which is the sequel to Nine Lives of Christmas. Uh, they also have Christmas House 2. The, the first Christmas House was the first Christmas movie that actually had gay league act characters. So Christmas House 2 is, is currently filming right now. They have some with, um, you yeah. know, Tyler Heights and Joy Lenz and pretty much everybody, all of, a lot of the Hallmark actors are back this Christmas for um, filming and a lot of new faces as well. You, I have on my highlights in my Instagram page, Hallmark Heartbeats Christmas 2021. There's a little highlight circle on there and it's, all of it is um, screenshots of all of the movies that have been confirmed so far, all 20, all 20 of them. So if you get, want to look at it, go look at it. Um, it's also, and I will also be posting some more behind the scenes shots. But what I'm really excited about and hoping to hear, I um, to get a chance to talk with one of the actors is Christmas Bond, which is the first Hallmark Christmas movie to have an autistic main character and an autistic actor playing the autistic main character in the movie. So that, that was Sarge Holly Robinson Pete and the actor who will play her son. His name is Nick Gonzalez. So, but yeah. It's gonna be a really good, it's gonna be a really good Christmas movie. And a lot of, it seems like they're, they're like really, really, really hearing our call for diversity, because I'm some of the actors that I've heard um, that they've seen in the movie that they have in the movie so far, I are new to Hallmark. Number one, number two, they have Korean actors, Asian actors, Black actors. They have a whole movie out called Chris that they're filming right now called Christmas in Harlem. <laughs> That's. Um, even though I don't understand why they have a movie called Christmas in Harlem filmed in Connecticut, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that's, a, um, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, next week, we will, I will be back. It will just be me. Um, yes. Uh, reviewing Love Strikes Twice. Um, but before that, I will be this Thursday, my interview with Megan McNulty, who is the executive producer of um, Taking the Rings, and Eliza Hayes, my 
who it, who played um, Alexandra will be coming out this Thursday. So give that a listen. And it advice. Um, what is that called? Love Love Strikes Twice comes out next week. So that's gonna be a fun one. And I'm signing off. See you guys next week. Bye.